Hey everybody, welcome to Frequalize This. I'm Dave. I'm John. This time we're going to do something. We're kind of inviting you into our world where, you know, one of the things we enjoy doing is kind of sharing music with each other. And especially when we get together, we're going to, we just kind of grab things. And it's like, hey, what have you been listening to? What's new on the horizon that you've been listening? And so we're going to walk through in this video some of the things that we're kind of currently listening to. All right, so one of the bands that I love is Wobbler. I mean, they are, you know, Norwegian, kind of retro prog. They kind of have that, you know, early 70s feel with the, you know, uh, great synth. Well, not really synth. I mean, it's more like great keyboards. Yeah. Okay, let's just say it that way. So when you see and you hear that their keyboard player, and, and I apologize if you are Norwegian, um, I am probably going to butcher the name here so but Lars I can get that one uh Frederick okay got there Frosly maybe Frosly maybe you. I you know <laughs> tell me I'm entirely wrong it, it, it's fair enough uh, I'm just gonna keep calling him keyboard player from keyboard Wobbler. player for Wobbler <laughs> I love you Wobbler. know Wobbler I mean excellent so I was really excited when I saw this and the album is fantastic but the, the song I had you listen to was uh Yarting 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 Again, help Again, me with the pronunciation. Swedish, right? I know. I, uh, Norwegian, this one. You gotta keep that. Norwegian, it's Norwegian, sorry. not Swedish. I'll get to Swedish with some of the stuff, but uh, this one is Norwegian. Um, at being a keyboard player, you're expecting you're gonna have some great keyboard jams going along with it. Uh, this particular song just jumps right in. <laughs> rocking and jamming right from the beginning but what's nice about it is and and he does this across the album and I, and I picked intentionally for this one you know two of the songs on the album are like 16 minutes in change and this one's a little over six minutes so it, we didn't go in didn't dive thoroughly deep on this one yeah. but it gives you a good encapsulation of what kind of the album as a whole is like in his approach and there's a lot of contours to the the song and you know like I said, it, it comes right out jamming and really ripping with the keyboards, but it mellows and it, and it has those kind of um, wobbler-esque kind of pastoral feels on occasion with it where it just kind of yeah. chills and you can just kind of relax and you feel like you want to be sitting there outside with a beer listening to this. That was the part where he brought a harpsichord in. Yeah, yeah. And, um, it, which is perfect for this genre we listen to, right? Uh, and I liked that. And note, you might think a, sometimes a keyboard player puts out a solo album and it's all instrumental, but this, so this is not. Right. Um, and the uh, lyrics are sung in Norwegian, Norwegian. not Swedish, uh, and not English. <laughs> right. Now, normally, I don't really click really well. Um, I, I like to, un, you know, hear the words and stuff or understand the words. But I really enjoyed this. I, for me, it's something weird where certain uses of native language from, from bands that are international, I can still hang out with them almost because the voice is being used as an instrument. Yeah, yeah. And it's it kind of makes me go, go back to, I always have to remind myself, hey, when you listen to Yes, you know, it's kind of been said that John Anderson wrote his lyrics. They don't make any sense a lot of times <laughs> because he wrote his lyrics for the lyrical flow that he wanted to yep. have his sure. voice as an instrument do at that moment. Right. And so uh, I got that feeling from this track. Yep. I really enjoyed it, um, even though it wasn't in English. So. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I liked it. It was a good yep. track. So if you're not familiar with Wobbler, first of all, check Wobbler out worth doing about but then but Lars and his solo album is totally worth a listen. All right John, what have you got for me? So, Dave, there's this crazy band. I know you already know them okay. because they're on their third album. <laughs> but uh I didn't know that. So, to me, I, I this was a new introduction to me, but um 
But I think you haven't heard the new album from Galactic Empire. No, I've, and, I've, I've heard the first two, well versed, but yeah, I've, I've, it's been too much this year. Yeah. I've not gotten there, so glad you're, glad you're adding this into the mix yeah. now. So I played Dave the Mandalorian theme. Uh, Galactic Empire is uh, um, one of the, you could say gimmicky, um, where they're wearing Star Wars costumes in their videos and stuff while they're playing, but and they're doing covers of mostly John Williams' scores from the Star Wars movie. And in this case, though, we've got Ludwig Göransson's uh, The Mandalorian theme. And uh, it was a short one, and, and I, I, because I knew Dave was familiar with the band already, but so we just jumped into this. And I picked this because it wasn't John Williams. Um, and I picked it for all of you as something to go check out because uh, I think the Mandalorian theme resonated with anybody that loves music. Um, and uh, particularly if you're also into film music, which I find a lot of crossover between film music and prog and things. Um, but here's the thing though, it's a fairly straightforward arrangement and really it, uh, it lacks a little bit of the coolness of that unique instrumentation that Ludwig is using in the original um, score. I put it out there for Dave because um, well, I knew he knew the band and I'm putting it out there for you because it is a, a short way to just catch the vibe of what these guys do. Then the video is fun, like it's dressed up in a Mandalorian costume and all of that. Um, so check it out and if you enjoy it, uh, that's, it's from their new album called Special Edition. Uh, from 2023 and then they've even got two albums prior where they're doing more of the music from uh, from Star Wars. What what do you think, Dave? I, you know, it's interesting because I, I, I'm a big Star Wars fan. I read Star Wars novels all the time. I uh, loved the Mandalorian TV show and the theme is for the for the show is kind of it, it's it's one of the better done themes for a TV show. Mm -hmm. In the sense, it's immediately recognizable. So it sort of made sense that Galactic Empire would at some point do this. Um, yeah, I think they could have brought a little more creativity to it in how they presented it. It was a little stripped down from what they might have done. Mm -hmm. um, and considering some things that they've done on, on past albums, it is a little bit disappointing to some degree. Um, but it is... The, the the nice part of them as a band is that if you you're attracted and you show up and you go you know I'm a Star Wars fan and I get the gimmick okay, but if you're also a music fan you're going to enjoy the musicality they bring to it that it's not just a cheap knockoff type of a thing they can play and they can play well so yeah yes so okay. on that point I almost played you the Battle of Hoth so. Uh, if if you're if you're ready to dismiss Galactic Empire as a gimmick that's doing a super straightforward arrangement cover of Mandalorian, check out the Battle of Hoth. The, it, that is a um, to me a, a really cool mix of um, them taking John Williams's composition and and saying, hey everyone, check out what he did here. It's super prog. Like it doesn't even sound like John Williams for a while. It sounds like just this cool prog metal thing. Mm. Nice. Yeah, so Battle of Hoth as, a, as another thing to check out after Mandalorian theme. Cool. All right, so for my next band and song is a British band this time. Uh, and the band is called Rain. Uh, so first of all, if you're, if you're going to try to Google this afterwards, you're going to have some a challenge. Because if, if you try to put Rain... Any rain band that's still still not always gonna get it right, or uh, you know, rain song that doesn't really help. Uh, and I picked the song Hypnosis. So if you have rain song Hypnosis, you're also going to find like ASMR related things. So that doesn't really help. Find their Bandcamp site and and kind of go from there, and that'll get it. Um, what's interesting with this 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 group is there's connection points to IQ, to Arena, to Frost. So if you're a, a fan of some of those bands, you're going to kind of have an interest to see what they're going to bring into here. Um, one of the descriptions that I found in an article on this this group was that kind of how the band itself came together is that they were just basically they were jamming, 
as a way to kind of find the feel for what they're going to be. And in the song Hypnosis, you kind of you kind of get that. I remember uh, posting that and sharing it with you a little while back uh, on Discord, and um, your comment back, something along the lines of, this had me smiling through the whole song, because it is that this kind of a happy, fun, upbeat... <laughs> Um, the vocal style is just really interesting and not a totally typical um, prog type vocal style and, and we were wrestling with and if yeah, you guys I mean listen to it and I, I'd say comment about what you think the vocal style is. The magic man will kill our tribe if we don't take them for a ride. Because I'm honestly struggling to, like, it's familiar, there's something about it, and in prepping for this, I was really hoping I would nail down what it is that I'm thinking I'm hearing, and I can't quite pin it down. No, we But there's something interesting, it, it, familiar, but unique all at the same time. Yeah, I couldn't pin it down either, the, the words that were popping into my head, but, but, but not well formed, were like Oasis, the band, uh, Britpop, um, Punk, even, um, and... Or maybe power pop, but then I was like, no, it's more, it's definitely British. Yeah, uh, it's definitely British. So it's not uh, punk pop in, the, in that American sense. But so it's it's interesting. We kind of agreed it. It stood out because it's not really the vocal stylings we're used to in a prog band. Right. It, it was it was the kind of thing like I was listening to this, and as I was getting kind of getting my head around the band there were moments that I would forget it was a it was kind of a prog leaning band and especially that when you when it comes from and has intersections with bands like IQ and Frost and Arena and you're thinking oh it's going to be this rip roar and prog conceptual whatever and it feels more like well it, it's the prog answer to a jam band is to some degree what it kind of feels like yeah um and the jam is cool uh it, it's uh Danceable. So any of you that are into jam bands and, and you go to the shows and you that's part of the draw, right? Right, sure. Jam bands can sit in a in a, a time signature and uh, that's danceable, 4-4 four, four sometimes, but then they can also change it up. And these guys do. The time signatures change, they're definitely proggy, but there's always a sort of um, ability to still move yeah. Yeah. to it. Um, and I really enjoy that because I, when I listen to music, I'm there's just a, I'm always moving, I'm tapping my foot yeah. or whatever it is, nodding my head, and that's why I was smiling the whole time. I had that because that that whole jam at the end, and I don't like jam bands, right. so I don't know. Yeah, if yeah. I, I wouldn't call these guys a jam band. No, okay, maybe it's a, they have a well. There's a jamming feel to it because yes. you're right. Because yes. like, okay, you, you say jam band. Classically, I would go to a Grateful Dead. Yeah, or and, Fish, and and that I'm lost on those. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. I I think um, that's a I, that's a that's a fair correction. Yeah, oh, I'll take well, that. I, well, but I think what you were getting at was that that was their uh, genesis. That was how yes. it was formed. Yeah. But the, and there's still and a flow and a feel with it. Exactly, exactly. But it is composed music. Yes, right. And it, and it's really good. It's not totally free form and just randomly all over the place. Yeah, no, it's yeah. good. Thanks for showing me that. Yeah, cool. All right, Dave, the next thing I have for you is uh, a little more... Um, traditional prog metal established band okay. redemption oh yeah uh eighth album came out this year called i am the storm uh just a real quick background they uh from the early 2000s with a guy uh, nick van dyke who a uh, guitar player keyboard player that stitched the band together in los angeles california with ray alder as the vocalist from fate's warning nice yeah and uh but the past two albums including this year's new one uh, has a new vocalist, new to this band anyway, Tom England, uh, who is known as the uh, lead singer of Evergrey, another band that's really uh, worth checking out. So this year's release, I picked Remember the Dawn, a uh, little bit over eight minutes, um, and really because it is one, at eight minutes, you really get a feel for what a band is about, right. what they're doing. Um, and I love this track. Uh, it's uh, It's got a complex jam, 
Um, it's got good vocals from Tom. And one of the things I liked in the video uh, is, watch the video, the video shows them recording their different parts. And you, it, on the one hand, um, that's cool to see. On the other hand, uh, some people don't really like it when bands don't play live together in the studio. Um, but and this is obvious here that that this is having to be recorded in different locations. But uh, but I don't fault the bands for that because um, with good producer, you know it's going to sound great. But uh, if the video is to believe, if the video is to be believed, uh, Tom Englund is looks pretty relaxed while he's singing prog metal, um, and he's he doesn't push hard, uh, which you can't really say for um, you know a lot of the vocalists in this uh, genre. And I find that to, to be a, a good factor for redemption because it doesn't get shrill. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, and the, it, he, Tom is, is able to let the music do the talking, so to speak. Right. He, he knows his range. He knows, yep. you know, and they've structured it within that. Yeah, that, it, 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 it's good. Sprinting to the finish. Joyful smiles upon our faces. Never really thinking why the race is run. And, and it's, it's great. I mean, I've been recently getting into Evergrey um, and enjoying them. Um, they have known about Fate's Warning. You know, they're very early. So, you know, if, if you want to talk about, you know, seminal early, where was prog metal forming? You're talking Fate's Warning, you're talking Queen's Reich, and then you're getting into Dream Theater. Um, so to have the that early influence, and then you have a band like Evergrade that has a you know with Tom's experience there, there's a consistent influence. So that kind of that makes good sense if you're going to need to switch out um, lead singers. Uh, it's a great choice, solid song, really well put together, really well structured, and but I mean, it, it, it rips right to the end. I mean, you know, it's like some of the time, like like some songs, they'll 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 kind of downshift uh, in energy level or what have you. And I think it's just kind of like, I mean, if I'm remembering it, it's just like, you know, you just keep chug, 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 boom. And then there's like a second and then, okay, we're done. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a fairly even arrangement. Um, and I say that in a good way. Right, it's, it's, not, it's not that it didn't do anything, you know, like a, a fan of progressive music, what, you know, whatever variety typically wants to have kind of the ebbs and flows and so forth. But there is something great about being able to just have a song that lets it rip from beginning to end, but does it, you know, there's complexity to it, there's intricacy to it, but it is, this is one that is hard charging, fast moving, and just coming for you the entire time. Yep. So uh, for fans of Evergrey, of course, um, and Dream Theater, um, it's definitely in that camp, and it's a really solid release. I like the whole album. All right, Dave. So um, I hope you enjoyed the songs that I showed you. This has been great. Yeah, enjoyable. Uh, awesome. We'll see you all next time. Bye bye.